Okay, hi, my name is Ben Labadia. I chose to do my capstone on the psychology of film because my passion is film and I don't foresee that ever changing and I, I hope to pursue a, a career in it and so I wanted to learn how I could be the best filmmaker that I could possibly be and to figure that out I knew that I needed to figure out how an audience would see me as the best filmmaker I could be so I wanted to dive into how I could possibly do that so I made a documentary like everybody else. <laughs>
when you laugh in a movie, you're actually lowering your blood pressure to the same extent that you lower it when doing physical exercise, said Dr. Michael Miller, director of the University of Maryland Center for Preventative Cardiology. Mr. Rush, the AP psychology teacher at Berlin High School says, I, I, there have been numerous movies that I've walked out of that I felt like I was kind of running a marathon because I think the emotions behind the movie actually impacted me. So I do think that it does have an impact on the body. Because of these effects, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has teamed with researchers from UCLA to use films as a way to understand more about eye movement and attention through MRI scans. Movies simulate real life more so than shapes and sounds previously used during these scans, and they hope this will provide clearer answers. As it turns out, cinema therapy, or movie therapy, is a tool many psychologists have studied and used. Cinema is a therapy because it touches everyone singularly and subjectively, says Captain Laura Brulin, a clinical psychologist in the health department of the Army near Bordeaux, France. Brulin found that cinema therapy helped increase participants' motivation to change as they viewed films about people overcoming similar issues. Brulin says the patient must learn to become a writer, director, and actor of his own life. Cinema therapy can also help people deal with other complications, including anxiety, depression, or repressed emotions. Mr. Rush also says that movies can be like a uh, thematic aid perception test, which is really ambiguous, but it would be something that's not ambiguous that may tie into someone's life. Uh, from a subconscious standpoint, yeah, I definitely think it could tap into some things that we're not aware of at the moment um, and may bring it to the surface, which, back to your question about therapy, could be very useful for an individual to say, you know, I saw a movie and here are some of the emotions that kind of came out of me as a result of it and discussing those topics and maybe being able to move further towards a catharsis, which is a term that you use for cleansing. And the same effect, I think oftentimes when people are sad, they watch sad movies. Um, and I think the message you get at the end of those movies is what's important, right? So even sad movies have an important message in them. We're actually showing them uh, unbroken right now to wounded students. Well, we're trying to teach resiliency and being resilient. And um, that's a difficult concept to talk about and teach. So to show someone that you know has gone through a difficult situation and how they handle that difficult situation, um, I think it's important to use different modalities especially to get that point Resiliency was a hard concept for us to teach, and so when we thought about how we were going to teach this concept, film was the, the best way to, to show the children that some of you go through something hard and come out on the other side, and then really back to their own minds. Uh, you know, I think if someone is experiencing something like post-traumatic stress disorder and they're watching a film that's really intense, uh, that, that could cause some problems with flashbacks and some issues with post-traumatic stress disorder. The A.P. Meyer Psychology textbook states, recent films have offered some realistic depictions of psychological disorders. Black Swan portrays a main character suffering a delusional disorder. Tuple Grandin shows a lead character who successfully copes with autism spectrum disorder. And a single man accurately depicts depression. These accurate portrayals all help the common audience to understand and learn to accept those with disorders who most often don't follow a societal stigma. Film has truly changed the way we look at things. It challenges us to watch and absorb ideas we may not have let ourselves confront. It challenges filmmakers to keep it interesting and inventive. It challenges psychologists to use film as a way to challenge client behavior and ideas. And, as an aspiring filmmaker, it challenges me to improve upon the stories told with a fresh perspective and open outlook. So next time you watch a film, examine what makes it stand out to you, how you feel afterward, and what subsequent choices you make in your life after watching it. You might just find that that two-hour movie had more of a lasting effect on you than you thought. Thank you. Okay, so that was my documentary. Uh, my discussions with uh, the people that I interviewed, Mr. Karras, Mr. Uh, Rush, and Ms. Latorno, um, taught me how people and adults, adults and students uh, connect with film and how psychologists use film itself as a way to help those going through difficult situations. Uh, I know for myself I use film as a way to relax when watching it, but also to channel stress um, into something productive and creative when I'm actually making them. So that is why I want to pursue a career in it. I've always said that I want my films to be known for some being important, inspirational, and innovative, and that people know my films and my name because they were changed by them in some way. 
I have since learned the ways in which I can tap into people's minds and influence them to do better and be better while also creating inclusive and accurate films and thinking about those uh, who need film as a way to cope. And at first I thought I was only going to make this happen through traditional narrative films, but I have since found that doc the, for, through this documentary experience that you can touch people's lives by telling them the truth backed by research and it can still compel audiences. Thank you. If there's any questions. Uh, yes. I have a hard time sitting through movies in one sitting. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on perhaps my psychology regarding that? Are there other people like me who have a hard time sitting through a movie in one sitting? Yeah, I heard a, somebody else I talked to when I was researching this said the same thing. But I mean, watching like even part of a movie, it's just like the feeling that you find in it really like you can probably watch any scene and there will be some sort of emotion um, you don't really need to watch the beginning middle and end but w when people do watch the full movie through or at least see the beginning and the end it's important for people like if they're watching it to learn like they were saying they used it for resiliency to see what they started off as and what it ended up doing for them jack um so obviously <coughs> You've got a background in this stuff, like the documentary is really good. Thank um, you. But do you think, like you use certain techniques, like you use all your friends to mm -hmm. react to certain things, yeah. and you recorded yourself doing certain things, acting things out. Mm -hmm. Do you think that film is like a basis for like how we interact in the real world and how it, it's like changed how we talk to each other and like, you know, think about each other overall? Well, yeah, it, film has a lot of influence on people. Like in some of my examples, it made people like even change their world views. So definitely interacting. Like it, you can also learn how to interact with people by watching a movie because it's like they're modeling what you should do in certain situations. Yes. So you have, you do have a lot of background in this, so you've been studying this for a long time. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious that through the research that you did, did you have any sort of like big or new revelation, something that was really kind of new to you? Um, well, I think most of this stuff I had I've always like liked making them, but I had never really researched like how they've affected people. So that was all new to me, learning about that and learning that like they've had such big impacts on the on the world and like people's views on like the global warming thing and like the deer hunting after Bambi, like all of that stuff I had never known about. And They've, it's even gone as far as like with the Sea World, like with Blackfish, the documentary, it like literally shut down like what they do. So, and I had that in there, but I, I cut it, but <laughs> yes. All of these are such positive examples of how powerful mm -hmm. film can be. Yeah. I wonder if you came upon any, you know, of the opposite. Yeah, there, there was definitely negative stuff. I just didn't like. You didn't want to bring it down. Yeah, I didn't want to bring it down with film. I wanted you guys to like it. But yeah, there is definitely, Mr. Rush started to talk about how in um, if someone has PTSD and they watch a film, it could definitely bring up, bring back traumatic experiences. Like if they're touching upon something that's very like not talked about in society, and it could definitely bring like, it could, but it could also open up people's eyes on that situation. But if it's happened to you, it's very difficult for some people to sit through, and then and not be affected. All right, good. <laughs>